So now this is a circuit that I uh, really like here. Uh, we have a monostable mode 555 timer. I press the uh, button, the output is high for a certain period of time. And uh, you know, this is kind of like a long period of time um, for what I was planning in the past. Um, but uh, this is our demonstration circuit. Now, the problem is that uh, without this capacitor here, we will just uh, pretend like we don't have the capacitor. And there's all kinds of ways to give false signals to this. And uh, this switch bounces and stuff. Um, but in any case, um, this also cures that uh, switch bounce because we have the time there. Now, you can see if I hold the button down, the output's going to stay high. That is because we have a direct connection when I close the switch to ground to pin number two. The capacitor makes it, there we go, so that um, we don't have that direct connection anymore. There's, you know, a split second where it's kind of like a direct connection, but once the capacitor charges, then current's not going to flow anymore, and all it's going to see is this pull-up resistor right there. We'll get into more detail on that. And uh, also, you know, this, uh, you know, not terribly long out uh, time, but um, we want to shorten it, which would be, a uh, big reason why you would actually make this circuit you know maybe I can't release the button as quick as the output is high there you can see it's really uh, short you know I might not even be able to go that quick but maybe my goal you know I could even use a lower value capacitor here so that it goes even quicker until we get to the limit of this the main thing is though if I press the button and hold it the outputs not uh, gonna stay high and this is switch bounce when I release it it there we go. So I meant to only press it once and we saw it like bounce like two or three times one time. There's a lot of times there's a switch bounce. And there we go. And so that's why you have the longer period of time. That gets rid of that uh, switch bounce uh, problems. Especially uh, when you uh, just pressed it. Um, but yeah, there you can see. Even though we got that short in timing. Now if I hold it down because of the direct connection, it's going to stay high until I release it. And we had that switch bounce. But um any case, again, you uh, could use circuitry for the uh, switch debouncing and then add it uh, to this for the, uh, you know, shortened pulse right there. And that would get rid of uh, some of the problems. But we're not going to worry about that. So um, that's our smaller value resistor. We'll get back to the original circuit. So, yeah, all kinds of ways you can quickly modify this. And um, this is a 100 microfarad uh, capacitor. This is a 10 microfarad capacitor. So we just, with this larger one, the output's going to be high 10 times longer than the uh, lower value one right there. It's that easy to adjust them. This is probably about as large as you want to go because there's a brief period of time uh, where the capacitor is shorted. and um, Or, you know, shorted for a while, but uh, it only matters while it is charged. It just basically instantly discharges during that short, and then it's just sitting there. Um, but, you know, for a brief period of time, that's kind of a high current. So lower value uh, capacitor, the better. And you can go up a lot in resistance. You can go a lot lower in capacitors. But generally, I try to use like 100 microfarad, 1,000 microfarad, as much as I can for my demonstration uh, circuits because they, they kind of make the math easy. So yeah, here we have it. Uh, you know, 555 timer, monostable mode, basic stuff. When the output is high, as close to 5 volts as it can go, red LED lights up. Of course, I use 220 ohm resistor because we need, you know, a fair amount of current through the LED to get it. Uh, bright whereas a blue LED thousand ohm resistor more than uh, four times as high as this one right here um, so technically it would cut the uh, current more than a fourth um, you know it might be like a fifth of the current or something but um, we also have the blue LED it drops more voltage than the red LED one thing though is it makes a pretty good uh, ground connection the output does um, when the blue LED lights up a lot less current through the blue LED than the red LED. It still gets, you know, about as bright as the red one. Um, but again, we lose a, at least a volt uh, coming out there. So probably only about 4 volts lighting the red LED. Well, closer to 5 volts lighting the blue one. But in uh, any case, let's get to the actual part of the circuit that matters for this uh, circuit. So monostable mode. Covered that a lot. Of course, pin 4 is waiting for a low input. It's going to force the output low no matter what. We don't want that in this circuit. Pin number two, well, when it comes to pin and two and six, when they have their battles, pin two, getting a low input. We saw if I put a jumper right here, I hold the button down. Then with that jumper there, we're going to have ground as long as I hold uh, the button right there. 
Pin number two is more powerful than six. So it's gonna hold the output high as long as it has a low input, no matter what six wants. Six doesn't matter anymore. Um, but we got rid of that jumper. We have a capacitor. So capacitor is you know, kind of like a dead end, like it looks. There's plates on each side, uh, but they're separated by an insulator. So when you see uh, one of the wire terminals there, it comes to uh, plates, you know, probably multiple plates, they can layer them. But uh, the other multiple plates on the other side, connect to the other pin, um, they all have an insulation in between them in some way. There's a number of ways you can do that. Uh, you know, there's a gap though between the two uh, plates, even if they're multi-layered plates. So we have uh, right here, it will be discharge. We got positive supply, positive supply. That's a direct connection. Wherever you see something connected directly to this positive rail up there, you know, I can put that resistor to uh, pin number eight, or I could put it over here, it doesn't matter. That's all one node, it's one connection. We come up to that jumper, come down here, everything, um, that's all one connection. That's going to the uh, positive supply. We got pin four also, and uh, I accidentally uh, shorted these two. I'll do it again right now. You know, the power supply has short circuit protection. I yanked the component and I lost power. Um, you can see we got positive supply directly to negative supply when I connect them together. I should have mentioned this uh, first. That is short circuit protection. Don't do that on purpose. Um, that is short circuit protection. We got the power supply. Um, not all of them have it if you have a battery or something. You definitely don't want to be wiring circuits while they are uh, being powered. I want to mention that. And uh, So sorry for rambling on about this long enough. I should uh, get to the explanation of the circuit. But yeah, there we go. I shorted it. It cut power there. That short circuit protection, other stuff, you'll get a big spark or something. Maybe metal will uh, vaporize and uh, other things. So that's another reason why I limit current. Use a power supply that limits current. When I start powering stuff with uh, batteries more, I'm probably going to have something that limits current. And then maybe even have something else that does uh, short circuit protection. Um, but, uh, you know... I don't uh, believe in applying a battery, especially ones that can provide high current. Because um, some of the alkaline ones, even if you short them, you know, they couldn't provide a lot of current. They got hot or whatever. Um, but, um, you know, they didn't vaporize metal as much as the lithium iron phosphate batteries can. So let's get back to this. So, yeah, even if I hold the button, then uh, it's not going to keep a low signal to pin number two. And again, the reason why the uh, capacitor is uh, discharged while well, the switch is open, and uh, we close the switch. Now, pin 2 C is ground, but that side of the capacitor is going to charge up. It's going to get a positive uh, voltage, more positive voltage. And that side is going to get more negative because it's going to ground. But then once you know it's charged, it's not going to move uh, anymore. So current's not going to be pulled that way. Voltage is not going to be pulled down. It's actually going to be pulled up to the positive supply voltage even if the switch is held. Now when I release the switch, since these are relatively low value capacitor uh, resistors, I mean, for this capacitor, that's half of a microfarad, then uh, we could use a polarized one that's larger, but might as well go small on this. Doesn't matter how small it is. When we press this, it's gonna see a low input. And um, the smaller it is, the quicker that period's gonna last. It's gonna charge, but doesn't matter, because uh, we want to press and release this basically as quick as we can. So we release this. Remember, this side got more positive right there. That side more negative. We release this. Now we got positive on uh, both sides there. It's actually a connection uh, back to itself because we got positive, positive there. Um, so the power supply doesn't really matter anymore. We have the positive that's going to flow over there. But pin 2 is going to still sense that positive even though this is uh, discharged, it doesn't affect that right there. This was more positive. Uh, but this point here is going to stay more positive. This will become neutral as far as the capacitor is concerned because we'll have positive on both sides right there. This whole thing will be to the positive supply until we press the button again. That's a pull-up resistor. That's a direct connection. Direct connection always gives you the voltage of that direct connection no matter what the pull-up resistor is doing if the switch is closed. When the switch is open, then we have the opposite. That pull-up resistor is going to give the full supply voltage because this is much, much more resistance. Compared to this, this is no resistance. That's like infinite resistance. Um, but yeah, uh, that went on like really long, um, but I hope you still enjoyed. Um, again, there's uh, 
you could use a smaller cap uh, you could change the timing we did that I swapped the 10 uh, microfarad capacitor I mean a hundred microfarad capacitor for a 10 microfarad capacitor it went uh, 10 times faster could use a one microfarad capacitor I could use this capacitor um, at some point maybe you won't notice the red LED even flash at all um, so if you need just very extremely brief uh, pulse and there's times where you do maybe that pulse is uh, you know you need high current during that pulse uh, but you still just want to look at that voltage still want that voltage to happen but you want it to be brief then you can make it extremely short and uh, I got reasons for that um, but uh, I've covered that in other videos as a, a voltage booster you want to get the coil conducting current but the current is a high amount of current uh, and the goal is to stop that current to get the inductive kickback so you just want that coil to conduct well it's building up the magnetic field and by the time it builds up that magnetic field you want to cut the current from the power supply and then the coil pushes current at a higher voltage um, so that was the motivation for this circuit to begin with so again for those of you that stuck around this long thanks uh, this was a long ramble and uh, I'm even getting bored talking about it now so I'm sure you're even more bored listening to it make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video